Hello, and thank you for joining us. You know, in today's private cloud, most vendors are really defining it as virtual machine management. You push a button, you get a virtual machine. You know, that's great. It really solves a big problem inside of business. However, it really puts a lot of limits on the potential for cloud. At Dynamic Ops, we built the Cloud Automation Center, which is an amazing cloud solution that solves real business needs today. However, we built that on top of a platform that's highly extensible to really solve any sort of operational problem in an automated fashion. My name is Chad Jones. I'm Vice President Strategy and Product Management here at Dynamic Ops. And let's take a look at exactly what that means. Our agenda for today is simply to review the Dynamic Ops architecture and our Cloud Development Kit, or CDK for short, the industry's first SDK for the cloud. And then we'll go to a demonstration about how you can extend using our platform to entirely new use cases, in this case, an employee onboarding and offboarding application. So the capabilities of Dynamic Ops are quite unique in the industry. Now, we have the Dynamic Ops Cloud Suite and the Cloud Development Kit as our two main products. The Cloud Suite has a Cloud Automation Center, which you associate with the automation of virtual machine and physical machine management. And we can extend that to external clouds as well, such as Amazon EC2. But with that, we also have the Dynamic Ops platform that acts as the underlying engine, which is all model-based, so I can create a whole new set of logic to extend to new use cases without actually having to modify my core engine. The Cloud Development Kit informs the developer on how to actually create those models and inject them into our system. So if we look at our extensibility spectrum, we enable the business relevant cloud through our normal cloud automation center. We can adapt to any environment through our design center. However, when we want to use our platform to extend to net new use cases, that's when we're able to use the Cloud Development Kit. Now, if we look at our platform, we really have a unique approach to how we implement this type of functionality. So we have our fabric resources, and that includes compute network and storage, but it also includes any type of system inside of your environment or any cloud service outside of your environment. We take our central repository, which is our platform, and we're able to inject logic for management into that central repository. Now, that really is the central determination factor for what gets executed when and where. From there, we wrap everything in the dynamic cloud interface. It's a RESTful API, fully secured, that actually allows you to access the information inside of the cloud. From there, that's really what generates the cloud. The cloud is not a web portal. It is that API. So then I can use that to create any sort of application or functionality on top of it. That includes our own portal, a custom portal, applications, even devices getting informed by connecting to the cloud before connecting to any other sort of resource. From there, when you actually perform action, the data and the logic will download to a distributed execution manager. That distributed execution manager is the engine to perform actions locally in the data center. However, it only has just enough personality to actually connect back to the central repository and ask for information or for jobs. There is no commingling of the business logic and the execution engine. So if I have to update anything in the logic, I do it centrally, and the very next time there's a request, it brings down that updated logic and executes it locally, all without having to restart the system or upgrade any of the components. Again, this is cloud. It's 24-7, 365. If I have to change some functionality, I can't keep upgrading my system and dropping my service. From there, it actually executes wherever a distributed execution manager is located, anywhere around the world. So again, I'm centrally defining what the logic is, but then locally executing that around the world, anywhere in my cloud. So when we look at the Dynamic Ops platform, we're able to use the Cloud Development Kit to create custom models and group those into a custom module. Now, it's a declarative approach to programming. You create the minimal amount of code necessary to actually interact with your systems, and then you inject it into our platform where we auto-create 
the rest of the code necessary to turn that into a cloud service. That includes the dynamic cloud interface, fully implementing the security model around that, and making it available to any applications or devices as needed. From there, the same method applies to the custom modules as it does to the rest of the logic inside of the Dynamic Ops platform. So then when I centrally define that logic through the model, the data comes down, the logic is downloaded with the data down to the distributed execution manager where it's executed locally, again, around the world wherever those distributed execution managers are located. So if there's some sort of bug or change that needs to be done or the code evolves over time, I simply upgrade what is in place centrally. And again, the very next time it's needed, that update is taken down with the data and it executes locally without the system having to be restarted or upgraded. So in our demonstration, we're gonna show you how development can actually use this to quickly develop an application and move it through its process. So in this example, we're gonna have development creating an employee onboarding and offboarding application. Uh, it's really creating a centralized form for entering information in one location. Because you think about when an employee comes on board, an HR person has to add them into Active Directory, enter in all of their information into the PeopleSoft system, add them to a medical uh, insurance, dental insurance, add the 401k, uh, make sure they're part of the proper groups inside of Active Directory so that they can get access to the resources they need to do their job. But more importantly, when an employee offboards, they need to make sure that all of the remnants of that employee's access are cleaned up, they're properly archived according to policy. So again, we're gonna show you how that's gonna work through our cloud system. So really we're virtualizing the operations process and really making it available to a non-IT user. And that's what we're gonna show you here in the demo. We're gonna orchestrate that action between Active Directory, the 401k system, and the medical and dental insurance systems as well as making sure the user is part of the proper groups to gain access to the resources necessary to do their jobs. So the key capabilities to view here are first of all, the simplified model creation and instant availability of that new cloud service. The orchestration across multiple interfaces and the ability to virtualize any operations process transforming it into a cloud service, whether it has to do with virtual machines or not. And again, this is unique to Dynamic Ops. So let's go take a look at what this means. So now I'm on my demonstration station. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my DCAC server here. And what you see in front of you are the components that actually make up a custom model. So in the DLLs, which are actually compiled, so we can't look at those, there's a minimal amount of code to actually connect to the 401k system, the medical system, the Delta Dental system, and into uh, Active Directory. For purpose of this demo, really uh, Active Directory will be our main focus. Um, we have our connection layer here to define how to connect into those different data access layers. And then our security config as well. If we look at our security config, we can actually define based upon who you are, the type of access you have to the different parts of the model or whether you have access to the model at all. And if you can read, write, write to it, delete things, all of those are easily controlled simple, through simple XML. So now for us to inject into the system, it's a pretty straightforward process. So I'm gonna go into Excel and I'm gonna use something called Power Pivot. Now what Power Pivot allows me to do is interact with the API, the RESTful API of our system and show us that there are things inside of our repository. So if I go into from data feeds here and I log into our meta model, I'm gonna test my connection. Connect, test is successful. I'm gonna go and say next. Now, this is pulling up through our actual abstracted dynamic cloud interface, all of the things that are presented to my security context from the cloud. So I'm gonna select models here and say finish. Now, what you see here is talking to the actual interface, pulling in the models that we have loaded inside of our system. So now what you'll notice here is that we have the meta model, security model, tracking model, and the other various models. But what we do not have here is the employee model. Okay, so that's the name of the model that we're actually going to inject into the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this off. What I'm gonna do is go into install model. 
Now, what this does is use our cloud utility to actually inject the model in that, of those files into the actual repository itself. And then we're going to auto-generate automatically all of the code necessary to create the API, uh, implement the security around that API, and make sure everything's transformed into a cloud service quite simply. So now we're already done. So as you can see here, we've installed the model. So now I'm going to go back to my power pivot, and I'm going to go in and refresh. And now what you'll see is that I've got nine rows transferred. That's because I now have the new employee model entities available to me. That means I've automatically created that cloud service and already it's inside of the API. And I haven't had to restart the service for anything. So now I can go in and also look inside that model. So if I go in here and look at the employee model entities, test the connection, and now it can actually connect to that service, say next. And here is the dental plans, employees, medical plans, and retirement plans that are available for my employees. Go ahead and say finish. So it'll pull it up and close. And there we are. So now you can see these are the different choices that I have inside of that model today for delta plans, for employees. I haven't entered anyone yet. Blue Cross Blue Shield, my retirement plans, all located inside of here. So now I'm going to go ahead and log into my system and show you how the form interacts with that. Right? So remember, we've done this at the API level, but now you need an application to interact with that. OK, so let's go ahead and flip out of the actual administrator interface here. And we're going to go move over to my portal. So now I'm logged into the DCAC employee portal because that's what I actually added into the system. Now this is a very basic example. Again, we haven't spent a lot of time printing it up, as you can see. But what we do have here is the new employee onboarding and employee offboarding. So I'm going to go ahead and say new employee onboarding. And I'm going to enter in uh, Bill Smith. And his address we'll just put here in Burlington, if I can type. And that's Burlington. And that's Mass. 803. Now, I'm going to select the location for him, say it's Boston, and then we're going to flip into what group they're actually a member of, which is development. What medical plan they actually have, which is the BCBS HMO, the dental plans, which will be Delta Dental, and then the retirement plan, which we'll put as Fidelity. Again, this is a simple implementation and example uh, of this form. It can get quite complex, but again, we're keeping it simple for this demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and say next. What you'll see here is all of our information is uh, created and ready to submit. And I'll go ahead and say submit. So now the employee has been submitted. And in the back end, it's actually doing the processing of adding the user to all of those different interfaces. Now, the easiest way for us to actually look at that is to go into Active Directory and see that user. So here we are on my domain controller. I'm going to go into. Active Directory, Users and Computers. And then, remember, we made that user a member of the development group. So looking at my Active Directory, I go into the development group. So here in the development OU, we'll notice that our B. Smith user was created. If I double click on B. Smith and look at their properties, you'll notice that the address was all populated in. And if we go over to the membership, you'll see that they were actually added to the dev users group all automatically. So now, if I went back into my interface and said user offboarding, it would actually roll back all of these things according to policy, whether I just delete the user, archive them, pull them out of their uh, Blue Cross, out of their Delta Dental, out of their Fidelity, uh, all of those things. Again, we're able to virtualize that entire operations process and really apply that to HR. Now you'll notice that it really didn't have anything to do with creating a virtual machine. Because again, we believe that extending the power of cloud is really not limited or shouldn't be limited to just virtual machines. It really can be extended to any operations use case. So now remember, just as easily as we added this service, we can remove it. It's modular. It doesn't require any sort of reboots, anything like that. If I want to upgrade that service or I just want to deprecate it and add a new service, a better one, then I can easily do that. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to my admin interface over here. 
and I'm just simply going to uninstall the model. Now remember, we had we could see this through our power pivot. Right now, this is actually uninstalling the model. You see it completed successfully. So if we bring back up power pivot, and we go back to models, originally the employee model entity was there. If I go in here and hit refresh, it's going to connect back. You'll see it had eight rows transferred, and it's gone just that easily. Again, no reboot of services. I haven't had to upgrade or change any sort of architecture. That's impossible around the world with a cloud infrastructure. I simply pulled it out of the central definition and it's gone just as quickly as I added it the first time. So as you can see, Dynamic Ops has a unique approach to actually creating cloud services. We're not fixated on virtual machine management, though we have an incredible solution through our Cloud Automation Center to reach those business cases. But we believe the power of the cloud can be extended to any operational use case, and that's what the demonstration has proven. So Dynamic Ops really delivers an enterprise class cloud computing infrastructure that can be extended to multiple use cases and do it in the shortest amount of time at the least amount of cost. It has comprehensive out-of-the-box functionality, as user-centric, business-aware governance so that we can get down to a very granular level with policy. It's extensible by design, as you clearly have seen through our demonstration, and it's holistic. It deals with private and public, virtual and physical, servers and desktops, and very soon applications. It's multi-vendor, open and agnostic, and we're the most mature product in production today, with implementations over 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, and 100,000 VMs under management. My name is Chad Jones. Thank you very much for joining us today, and we'll see you soon.